Greta Thunberg faces a criminal conspiracy probe as the nation of India strikes back against big tech. In this video, we're going to take a look at the international mess the teenage Swedish activist has gotten herself into, how Twitter's finding itself also in hot water, and how the nation of India is part of an international backlash against big tech that promises to end Silicon Valley censorship once and for all. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you. As always, we're here to give you each and every day conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent times by analyzing current events and a lot of conservative trends so we can all think better and therefore feel better. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We would love to have you as a regular part of this channel. Also, for any of you Rumble fans out there, make sure to subscribe to our brand new Rumble channel by clicking on the link below. And for you podcast fans, we are now one of the top 20 podcasts in the nation for political commentary. And so make sure to click on that link below and sign up for our various podcast platforms as well. Before we begin here, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that's the makers of the backup solar bank. In the midst of this whole emergency situation that we found ourselves in, what now? It's been about a year. One of the best things you can invest in for your protection when the lights go out is what's called a solar power bank. It's a backup power bank that's powered by the sun. So it allows you to charge up to two devices at once. You'll never have to waste money on batteries again. Supply is limited. And this is the very last chance to get yours at a 20% discount before they sell out. So do not wait Click on that link below right now and give you and your family the gift of power anywhere in the world. Click on the link below or go to their website at BackupSolarBank.com. That's BackupSolarBank.com. You'll be glad that you did. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Greta! Greta Thunberg! Our good old Greta is back in the news, but not in the way that she wants to be. Greta has found herself in the midst of a gigantic international controversy involving what the nationalist government in India is calling globalist interference into Indian domestic affairs, with Greta being one of the primary suspects. So just a bit of background here. The government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who we featured a number of times on this channel, he's part of what's called the BJP, or the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, they're a thoroughly Hindu nationalist right-wing party. Actually, a little fun fact, the BJP is actually the largest democratic party in the world today. And back in 2014, they won the single largest democratic election in human history. Modi ran on a thoroughly nationalist, populist platform. He was firmly anti-establishment, anti-elite. He led a mass electoral rebellion against the center-left Indian National Congress Party, which is basically the secular globalist party in India. And so as a politician, Modi's right up there with our own dear President Trump. He's begun effectively moving India into a post-globalist era. Modi has, uh, Modi has instituted a thoroughgoing economic nationalism in India. He's restoring a Hindu nationalist vision of life throughout the country. Modi has been highly successful uh, in galvanizing the vast majority of the Indian population to embrace a post-globalist vision of life. And that success was seen most especially in the latest 2019 election, where the BJP won their second landslide election in a row. They absolutely dominated the national election for a second time. So that's some background to Narendra Modi. And of course, he and Trump are very close, very close. The Howdy Modi rally in Texas was the single largest rally turnout for any foreign leader ever in the United States. And then, of course, Trump had an amazing turnout when he visited India for the Namaste Trump rally. Okay, so there you go. What's been going on is that over the last several weeks, farmers throughout India have been leading nationwide protests against the Modi government and a number of reforms that they've been implementing. Primarily, as I understand it from the reading I've done, primarily deregulating measures that allow private buyers more freedom, uh, more free reign in a marketplace that's been dominated by government subsidies. Okay, I'm not going to get lost in the weeds here, obviously. It's just that you have government reforms that farmers really, really, really don't like, and they're protesting, and they've been protesting for weeks now, often quite violently, as I understand it. So, enter in Greta Thunberg, okay? Not just Greta Thunberg, but Twitter as a whole, the whole Twitter corporation. What happened with Greta is actually part of a larger issue of Twitter policies in relation to sovereign nations, which were, which is very important, which we're going to get into. But first, Greta, okay. 
So Greta tweets out a document that contained tweets that she was told to post along with actions she should take regarding the farmer protests in India. So according to the New York Post, the campaign and social media instructions were created by Canada's Poetic Justice Foundation, which claims to be a grassroots group that seeks to disrupt and challenge systemic inequities and biases, which I'm sure they're very biased towards, of course. It's a Canadian group that's very much involved in raising awareness for the farmers and the like. And as part of that, they recommend to Greta that she highlight planned demonstrations at Indian embassies. All right, now, uh, obviously this was a mistake, but Greta tweeted this political strategy sheet out for the public. She, she was supposed to tweet out the suggested tweets, do the suggested actions, but she wasn't supposed to tweet out the memo itself. That was for her alone to see. So once she realized what she did, she or someone associated with her, they deleted the tweet, but not before breaking 911 was able to screen capture it. So the damage was done. Well, as far as the Delhi police were concerned, what Greta did here is she's in fact engaged in foreign intervention of purely domestic affairs. And India's foreign ministry has gotten involved in this as well. In fact, a number of senior government ministers, Indian celebrities and like, have all banded together and denounced outsiders like Thunberg and also the pop star Rihanna for interfering with something they really know nothing about. So as we speak, Delhi police are actively beginning a formal investigation into whether Greta promoted what they're calling enmity between different groups and criminal conspiracy. So Greta is in fact being threatened with indictment from India and Indian officials were not taking kindly to her interfering in her domestic affairs. Now, I mentioned that what's going on with Greta and her Twitter feed is actually a microcosm of what's going on at the macrocosmic level of Twitter. BuzzFeed is reporting that India's government has called on Twitter to block several hundred accounts that were critical of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and particularly his handling of the farmers' protests. Now, interestingly, Twitter had originally complied with the Modi government's order. They blocked 250 accounts belonging to activists, political commentators, all left wing. But then Twitter in the name, I kid you not, I literally kid you not, in the name of free speech, unblocked them. So the Modi government's currently threatening Twitter. Shut these accounts down or else there's going to be definite legal action against you. Now, keep in mind, the Modi government is not happy at all with what Twitter did to President Trump in deleting his account. There is a massive backlash brewing against the Twitter ban of Trump from within the Indian parliament and the BJP party. Now, of course, ironically, the Modi government is complaining that these Twitter accounts are spreading disinformation. And here's the key. That disinformation may lead to violence within the country. So they need to be shut down, you know? like what you're doing to the conservative accounts in the U.S. Just apply the same standard here. Now, now, of course, they didn't say that part, but they could have. I wish they did. But here's the kicker. They also took on Twitter's defense of free speech, which, of course, we all know is utterly and patently pathetic, given what they've done with President Trump and countless other conservative content creators. Twitter wouldn't know free speech if it bit them in the arse, as they say. But Indian officials didn't back down. According to BuzzFeed, India pushed back on Twitter's free speech argument by saying, listen to this, that the company had no constitutional, statutory, or any legal basis whatsoever to interpret what constituted free speech, here's the key, under Indian laws. The sovereign nation of India will decide what is and what is not free speech, not Twitter. Our nation will not have Silicon Valley define what is or what is not free speech. And again, they could have added, especially when you are so blatantly selective and hypocritical when it comes to the freedom of speech in your own damn nation, the United States. Now that is becoming the new chorus among nationalist populist countries throughout the entire world who are rising up against big tech. Now, before we get into that, I am so excited to announce that we have a brand new alt tech directory called the New Conservative Survival Guide to Big Tech Censorship, which you can get absolutely free as an ebook download by clicking on the link below. Now, this is a guide that's going to give you 
all of the different alternative social media sites that are popping up that you can go to get all your favorite independent content creators. But of course, the key here is without any of the censorship that we're being subjected to by big tech. It's also going to give you insights into what scholars are calling an emerging post-Google age. It is absolutely free as an ebook download. It's yours simply by clicking on the link below. So do not let big tech censors get in the way of your favorite content creators. Click on the link below and enjoy your survival guide to big tech censorship today. All right, so let's go back to what Russian President Vladimir Putin said a couple of weeks back regarding big tech. In a virtual meeting with the World Economic Forum, Putin actually warned that big tech monopolies were in the process of taking power that could indeed allow them to supersede the very power of nation states. And that's because big tech policies are becoming a direct threat to national sovereignty and the rule of law. <clears throat> in other words, sovereign nations have their own laws that define what is and what is not acceptable speech. Russia, Poland, Hungary. Here in the United States, we have what's called the FCC, right? The Federal Communications Commission. In order for you to be able to broadcast your program on television or the radio, you have to comply with FCC standards. However, there are a number of programs that fully comply with the FCC, but are not allowed to live stream, for example, on Facebook. And that's because they're guilty of wrong think. They're conservatives. They have the wrong political ideas. <coughs> so they're effectively banned. And so what more and more nations are doing is they're rising up and saying, big tech, you can feel free to come on in and serve our citizens, but you would better respect our laws. Your Silicon Valley oligarchs do not get to impose and dictate your sensibilities on our laws, period. Our laws govern what is and what is not acceptable speech, not the sensibilities of Silicon Valley executives. Capiche? <laughs> this is exactly what we're seeing in Poland now and in Hungary, increasingly, of course, in India. You most certainly may have your social media platforms in our nation, but you are going to respect our laws. And if your Silicon Valley San Francisco values can't handle that, then don't let the door hit you on the way out. So we'll, of course, be keeping our eyes on how things develop here, but there is no question a worldwide populist uprising is indeed happening before our eyes, and it's ready to decisively take on big tech. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how the rhino, never Trump, or Liz Cheney survives her leadership vote, all as the Republicans risk losing their base. You're not going to want to miss this. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.